Hey, welcome to our new Stair Chats podcast, where we chat on shares, not stairs. We're Tom31. My name's Aaron. I'm Sarah. And I'm Amy. This week we got so many questions on our Instagram about living life as a Christian and stewardship that we decided to split it into two weeks. So this week's theme is living as a Christian, and we're looking forward to discussing that later. But first, let's have a wee catch up. Tell me about your week, guys. My week's been quite good. How do we wake off for Easter, which was lovely? It was delightful. I really enjoyed it. Funny enough, I also had a week off for Easter. No My way. word, what a coincidence. Very relaxing. I really enjoyed it. Never would have guessed that you'd had one too. The sun was shining. Never. It really helped. It really was. I've I've been out on like I think I think every weekday last week I went out on a run. And so I've been trying to trying to do that. So that's going well at the minute. Nice, we love fitness. Yes, we do. I also, I went for three runs last week, which wow, is three more than I've ever done in my life. Um, I don't think I'd ever gone for a run before. Maybe once in my life. But I went down to We See Us Lewis Square, which in my year of working in East Belfast and my other year of living in East Belfast, I'd never been there. I'd only ever like, got a glimpse of the Wee Aslan statue. Well, what I did, I didn't run, but I went on long walks. Nice. So, you know, that sort of... We all did the we all did the five k for um the the essential workers and the carers. Yes, we did. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. It was actually quite enjoyable. Yeah, it actually was. I did enjoy mine. I put a wee podcast in and then went around the park. Mm, very good. What podcast was it? Was it Stair Chats by any chance? <laughs> Funny enough, it was not Stair Chats. Oh, what? Amy. Because to all our dismay, Stair Chats didn't come out last week. This is oh, true. No. We're um, so sorry. It was a podcast called. What was it? Myths and legends, just like stories and stuff. Mm-hmm. The origin of the Nutcracker. Mm. Oh wow! Interesting. Yeah, it is. Like it's actually kind of a weird story. I won't even. I won't even listen to it. It's just very strange. Right. I had it's like German folklore. I had quite a eventful time um, on Saturday. But I did something that I've never done before. What was that? I went to the garage to like get the car Hi. tires. Um, the front two tires needed replacing. And, I. It was really, it was a momentous occasion for me because, it, I mean, it was kind of embarrassing because... What happened? Because I don't actually know. Right. So I went in to, and I parked up, but obviously there's the two meter rule. So I couldn't like go to the guy. I had to shout, be like 10.30 appointment. <laughs> and he was like, I all right. So then I had to drive in to the little bay part by myself. And he was directing me in, but I couldn't hear a word he was saying because he was so far away. <laughs> and then the words that he was saying, I didn't understand what they meant. So I was just, you know, just trying to make the car straight, but it wasn't going straight. And he was telling me what way to do it, but he was, I couldn't hear him. So, you know, I was just judging it. And then there was, oh, so there's like a bolt on the, on the tires. So I needed like a bolt thing to undo the bolt, whatever. And then... Aaron had to put a hover, a, so what was it? A we hover, have a stuff, microwave. Stuff that has to go to the dump. And because we had to create a studio upstairs where all of this stuff was, we just put it in the car because we were like, we're not going to be driving anywhere anyway. It's going to be fine. <laughs> so but, yeah, Aaron put a microwave. Wait, don't blame it just on me. It was you, all I of our I didn't know mess. that it was getting put in. So it was there. So the right. hover was there. The hover, a massive crate. And in proportion to me, it was quite big. Quite large. Quite large. And also a microwave. Uh, so the little bolts thing was underneath all of that. So the mechanic was literally, he just stood there and stared at me while I had to take everything <laughs> out. Did you have to take it all out? I, yeah, I had to take all of it oh out. Goodness. And I didn't, the bolt that he said, I've never heard of before in my life. So I didn't even know what it looked like. So I literally just had to lift it up and then look at him. And he had to take it out himself. <laughs> Where actually was it? Because there's there's just nothing loose in there. It w- so I don't. It was just there's this polystyrene thing, and it was just in it. Oh yeah, yeah. I, I didn't even that. know that it was to take bolts out. Didn't know that. Well, I, I knew now because mm-hmm. then I had to put everything back into the boot, and then go and sit in reception because I physically couldn't stand outside and just watch them do it because mm-hmm. I was so ashamed. Of having to take all of this out. <laughs> I'm so ashamed. That's brilliant. It was I couldn't have done it, Sarah. You know, well done it to you. It was so... It was bad. Do you know what app I downloaded? What app? What app? So it's called Acapella. 
Oh, and it's hair. like it's like this little app where I can only record up to four parts because I only had the free version because I'm cheap. Yeah. Um, but you record like a little acapella song, so I record myself four times, and one of me will be like, zoom 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 zoom, <laughs> and then another part of me will like sing the lyrics, and another part will like do like a wee beatbox, and another part will do like the echoes. And I, um, Sarah was there and witnessed this. I was dancing in the background. I did a wee supporting dancer as well. Would you, I? W- I would call this a glorious rendition. I don't know. I don't know if you go that far to say that. Um, of um, for what one? Africa by oh. Toto. I see. I recommended that. See, I think um, if you still have this, Amy, do you still have it? I, t- I sent it to Sarah. Sarah I have it. Oh, I so, physically so you have know, it. That that could maybe be uploaded onto our Instagram oh, story. Oh, for, no. for everyone to see. This is the point when when I say <laughs> glorious, it might have been a slight stretch. But you know what? It, it worked really well for Everyone acapella. would love it. It worked really well for acapella because, see, the key of that is an awful low. It's awful low. And the range that fella has is just much better than I have. Mm. Um, But one part can be like, do, 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 do. And then the other part can be like, do, 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 do. That's a weak glimpse. Definitely check out our Instagram story. And Absolutely we'll, not. We'll try and upload it. It'll be a wee surprise <laughs> if we do upload it. It might be a wee surprise for me, so it will. Um, <laughs> Any fun facts this week, guys? Um, so, I... Right, so, if if hypothetically you boil um, a penguin egg... I thought you were about to say a penguin. I, I don't know why you would do this, but you knew the egg white around it mm-hmm. is actually transparent. That's interesting. It is. That Have is I tried that interesting before? fact. My interesting fact this week is that a single strand of spaghetti is called a spaghetto. No <laughs> way. No. I have, spaghetto? Yeah, a spaghetto. My word. It's like spaghetti, but with an O instead of an I. Imagine if you ordered that in a restaurant. Can I get one spaghetto, please? And they just present you That'd one piece. That would be a r- really, really sad dinner. So it well, would. you can get a really, really, really long piece of spaghetto. Oh, here, that's an idea. Yeah. One extra long spaghetti. <laughs> <laughs> Has anyone ever made pasta or spaghetti? Yeah, me and mum used to make pasta all the time. Oh, we had interesting. we had like a little thingy that clips to the table, and it like so when you make the pasta dough, is it called dough? Pasta dough? I don't know. And you like put it sure. through, and it like thins it to like the size of pasta, and then cuts yeah. it. Um, we used to do that all the time. I had a great time. That's fun. I did you make any spaghetti? I made more than oh, one. So you made spaghetti. So I made spaghetti. Oh, oh. tangatelli was our go-to. I think. Right. It was quite glorious. Nice. Um, my fun fact is that cats have fewer toes on their back paws than their front paws. Now, right, this is the thing that I feel like everyone should know. So, they have five toes on the front, but their back paws only have four toes. And that is honestly a fact. I'm telling you that. Well, that's interesting. It I, really is. I can't say I've ever no. had a pet cat, so I, I haven't don't, had a pet cat. Neither have I. But would you not just assume that they have the same amount? I would. But scientists think that the four-toe back paws might help them run faster. Wow. There we go. I mean, they might not have a little toe then to get in the way whenever they're running. Oh, here, that's it, yeah. True. That's like, right. Surely, if you're like going out on a run and for some reason you're barefoot, would your little toe not just kind of be like flopping all over be the place? Be on the edge just like be there? <laughs> <laughs> like, what's, what's the point of your little toe? Have you ever seen those um, running shoes that are like... It's made. It's meant to feel like barefoot running, so it's like shoes that have like five toes on them. Ah, uh, yes. So my yes. my dad loves running. Like he does my like word. Ironmans and marathons and everything. Um, and he has those. And honestly, I just laugh at them every single time. He puts them on. They look so strange, but I'm amazed at them at the same time. I can't say I've ever seen them. I've seen like socks that have that, and I think they're pure weird because who wants to have their toes poking out of like mm. socks? Uh, it'd be like a glove for the foot. Yeah, it's just weird. Imagine getting that sock wet, and it. Uh, I know that's, oh, rank. that's that's rank. I, oh. Like honestly, I would just Google barefoot running shoes because they look really really funny. <laughs> I'm looking at them now. <laughs> Everyone giggle that. It's really funny. So, um, guys, we're going to move on to our next section, which is called Ring. In case you missed the previous episodes of the podcast, Ring is the segment where we get our phone and we call someone random from the Methodist Church and ask them a few questions. Last time we rang Gavin Taylor from Dundrum and this week we are going to be ringing Jodie Walker from Tom 30. So, over to you, Aaron. Sweet. Okay, let's give this a go. Let's hope that she actually answers.
Hello. Hey Jody, it's Aaron from Tom Team here, and you're the surprise guest on our podcast this week. Hey Tom Team. <laughs> oh God, hi. So Jody, would you rather be compelled to punch everyone you meet in the arm, or be compelled to give wedgies to everyone you see who's wearing a green top? Um, the arm one. The arm. That's fair want- enough. I don't want to give people wedgies because that's a bit weird. It is. Yeah, this was Sarah's idea to come up with this one, so... I mean, I didn't personally come up with the wedgie. Well, so Judy, how's your day been? Yeah, my day's been going well. I've just had a few wee Zoom calls and stuff, so yeah, it's been good. How's your day? My day's been great, actually. I've had quite a productive morning. First day back to work after Easter holidays, so always good. You enjoying the nice wee weather? Oh yeah, loving it. Are you enjoying it? Yeah, it's pretty good. Like, good I found stuff. a few wee COVID. I found a few wee COVID spots. So, well, I call them my COVID spots, but nice. guess they're anyone's COVID spots. That's so sweet. So, what makes you happiest in life, Judy? Oh, let me. <laughs> That's a deep question. Um, what makes me happy in life? Um, Jesus. <laughs> um, good so answer. I just love. I just love um, friendships and like they make me happy just really just being with people um and also just kind of music quite makes makes me quite happy as well just you know singing along and um yes nice so if you could visit one planet what would it be and why oh guys my geography is not great i don't even know if that comes under the geography category (laughs) um do you know what i'll just go with uh mars because I like Mars bars. You know what? Valid reason. Fair enough. That was awful. So, do you have any words of wisdom before we hang up? Um, yeah, just go outside. And I know, I think in the North, you can only go for like one walk a day, can't you? Yeah. One bit of exercise. But like, yeah, just go out and enjoy the sunshine. Um, and also like, we've got so much time on our hands now. And um, because like we're not at school or we're not at work, so also like just he's just time to like get closer to God, and yeah, he'll really speak to you because like he's been speaking to me, and um, so yeah, just give him time and he'll speak through you guys. Class, thank you so much, Judy. Thank you guys. Hope you have a good day. You too. Bye. See ya. I think that's the most wholesome phone call to ever happen on my phone. That was just lovely. <laughs> so earlier we mentioned that our theme for this week's podcast is living as a Christian and we asked you guys what questions you have and you all responded really really well so we thought we'd tackle a few of those and share our experiences with them so the first question guys is what are the benefits to living as a Christian so um for me I think that it's like um like it relieves me from worry so t- for me it's a life without worry because I knew that um through everything God has a plan for what um I for my life um, and for everyone's lives and like he won't ever leave our sides so if I would get anxious about anything I would like pray about it and then ask God to like replace it with like his eternal peace and yeah. Um, For me the benefits um, are having a very fulfilled life. I feel like without mm, yeah. God and my faith I would be feeling a wee bit empty sometimes. Um, also just knowing that there's a plan for my life that yes I may not know anything of at the minute but God knows it and that sort of gives me a bit of comfort um, and just really knowing that um, I'm loved and that I belong to, to God and that it's not just I'm not just here for no reason like yeah yeah, yeah. Um, as I was thinking about this I was just thinking about what what life's all about um, and I think I, I got quite deep in my thoughts here. Um, I think the deepest desire as humans is like connection, relationship, peace and joy. Um, I think those are the things that people spend their entire lives searching for. Um, and actually, you're in a relationship with the God that provides all of that. Um, if anyone even vaguely knows me, they'll know my life verse is John 10. 10. Um, I have come that they may have life and have it to the full, just like you were saying, Aaron. And um, as I was thinking about this, the lyrics of a song called He is Faithful came to mind. Um, it was a big one at Old and Soul, mm-hmm. um, 2019 there. And the lyrics are, he is faithful, he is glorious, he is Jesus, and all my hope is in him. He is freedom, he is healing right now, 
He is hope and joy, love and peace and life. And that is the God that we get to be in relationship with as Christians. And I think that sums it up itself. What are the benefits to living as a Christian? It's It just exp- explains itself when you see who God is. Um, and that's the kind of God that you get to be in relationship with. So I just thought that was class. That is class. Um, so our next question is, what would um, be your tips for a day-to-day life as a Christian? So what are your habits? Right, so about two years ago, I realised that I was probably overcomplicating life as a Christian. So I was sitting in my room with my roommate and she said something along the lines of, Amy, I think it all boils down to this. Love God and love others. And I don't know how this took me 17 or 18 years to realise how simple that is. To uh, love God and love others. Um, it sums up the two greatest commandments in Matthew 22. Um, and I think our daily lives should reflect that. So day-to-day life as a Christian um, should reflect those two things. Um, as you spend time with God, that will really naturally happen. So love God, um, connect with him. That's what we looked at in our first episode of the podcast, connecting with God. That shows how much we love God. Um, so actually, if you want even practical tips about what we did, I would check out that episode. And also to love others. Um, why not do something every day that puts someone else first? Um, as the Bible commands us to love others. Um, I think that should be a day-to-day habit just as much as spending time with God. Yeah. Um, so why not do something every day, whether it's a cup of tea, a letter, a message, or a prayer for them. Um, make encouragement um, and positivity your daily habit. Um, yeah, so for me, um, if you were listening to the first episode of the podcast, I said about how um, my sort of main way that I connect with God is through worship. Um, so really for day-to-day, I always like to worship um, and so even when you don't feel like it, uh, worship anyway or read your Bible anyway, even just rest in God's presence um, and actually taking time away from the, the sort of worldly things to focus on God um, can help to sort of recenter yourself almost and really remind you that God is in control and that it's not just just you but definitely um, one of my habits is to to just listen to worship and worship god yeah, every yeah. day even if i'm not feeling it yeah i think um i've actually been trying to make that a priority as well is just to sing a song of worship every day because that builds up a habit and um, that refocuses me and reminds me of god's goodness yeah um for me um how i uh recenter myself um and focus on god is i would look outside and i would look at the nature and um all the things that god has actually created um just to really center myself and remind me that um i actually am loved by a god who is so powerful class um so when i read my bible i don't really um put a specific time to it like i i do it at night but um so i tried in the past going at like half 10 i'll do it but then my days aren't always the same so i'd be like out somewhere so then i couldn't do it so if you just generally put either you'll do it at morning or at night and just try and work it around yeah um so the next question um delves a wee bit further into those habits um so this question says how important is it to read the bible as a christian very (laughs) i would agree that is what i wrote um right so the bible is the literal word of god and it's an incredible thing and um, Paul writes in 2 Timothy 3.16 that all scripture is given by inspiration of God. And um, some translations even say all scripture is God breathed. Um, and your spirit is hungry with, uh, for connection with God, just like we were saying earlier. And the Bible is our food. So I want you to imagine not eating all day. And I know I can't go past about 11.30 without wanting a biscuit. Um, that's what I did today. Went downstairs, got myself a chocolate digestive. Um, and the Bible is food for the soul. So you're going to be spiritually starving um, without the Bible because it's, it's, it's our spiritual food. Um, yeah, so definitely knowing that it's, it's an everyday thing that you need um, is so, so important. And even for me, like I, if you know me, you probably know that I don't really read a lot. I don't enjoy reading. Um, but I do read my Bible because I know that it's God's word and I know that it's true. Um, and I knew that there's advice in there for me, no matter what situation I'm going to face. So yeah, that's whether good. that's I'm worried mm-hmm. about something or whether that's 
um, that actually I'm just feeling a wee bit down. I'm having an off day or whatever. I just I know that there's advice in there for me for that, um, and so that just keeps me going back to the Bible all the time. Yeah, so I would be the same as Aaron because um, throughout life I love advice. I would go to anyone and just ask for advice. And the Bible is full of advice. Mm-hmm. So um, if I'm facing any situations, I'll just go to the Bible, pray about it, and then hear from God. Yeah, and there's a lot of power in the Bible as well. It's um, part of the armour of God. It's the sword of the spirit. Um, it actually equips us and has the power to overcome. Um, we'll be looking at that in our live stream in not this week, but next week. Um, just about the power that it has and even last Sunday um, I briefly mentioned about the story in Matthew 4 where Jesus is is tempted by Satan and he uses um, scripture as a weapon to fight back and he uses it as a shield and he uses uses it as a sword and I think that's the power that we need to be equipping ourselves with and to really fight um, the daily battle yeah definitely Um, I know for all of us we all have like favorite bible verses um, which we all, I think, try to live by. Definitely. I think that's fair enough to say. Yeah. Um, so, like, for me, mine's Galatians 1.10, um, where it says that about not living to please people, but actually just living to please God and using your life as an act of service, um, which is really what I try to live by. Um, and I know uh, for Amy, she's already said about how she tries to live by her verse. And I'm, and I'm sure you do too, Sarah. Yeah, and I will reveal that in the next question because it actually goes nicely into it. Ooh, class. Speaking of which, uh, this next question is a really good one. Do you ever compare yourself to others? I assume that means um, maybe in your life as a Christian. Yes. Um, yes, also. <laughs> yeah. So yeah. even though I know it's like not good for me, um, I still find myself doing it sometimes. Um but I know that it's not about that and it's about just having a relationship between me and God and not looking at the relationship between one of my friends and God or um, someone in a church that I'm visiting and God. It's just between me and God. And so actually um, I'm trying to remind myself a lot of the time now that it's it's not just comparing yourself to other people, but it's just about your relationship with God. Yeah, do you know, what? I definitely struggle with this a lot. Um, probably a lot more in the past, actually. Um, but the reality is that we're all on a journey. And actually, comparison is going to steal your joy. Um, I think one of the most dest- destructive things in Christian communities is the pressure to be on top of everything um, and to have everything sorted out because it seems like everyone is perfect. Well, firstly, things aren't always what they seem. Uh, maybe you're comparing yourself to a perfect image that actually most likely isn't true. And secondly, maybe you're going through a patch where it's hard to connect with God. Um, this happens to everyone. I know it happens to us. Um, and even the people who seem perfect that you're comparing yourself to, um, I guarantee it happens to them too. So actually, maybe you're comparing yourself to um, an image that actually isn't true. Yeah. Um, so definitely more in the past. I would compare myself to other Christians and sort of, you know, just compare myself and like get quite down about it. Um, so my favourite verse is Psalm 139. Um, especially uh, verse 14 of it I praise you because I am fearfully and wonderfully made your works are wonderful I know that full well so that just really reminds me that um, God has just, just created me the way that he wants it to be yeah yeah um, I said that it's kind of something I struggled with more in the past because um, it's actually been a real area of growth for me um, this is kind of what I've learned over the last while um, if you find yourself comparing yourself to someone um, maybe ask God to help them uh, that inspire you instead. So some of my friends are so passionate about Jesus and um, they're on fire, they're prayer warriors um, and they seem to be on fire for him all the time. But instead of being bitter and comparing myself, uh, I actually just get so excited for them and it makes me strive to be on fire and full of the spirit. Uh, so God will help you exchange compassion for joy and excitement. So I think it's it's when we have bitterness and maybe when we have um, even just sadness from comparison, Give that to God and let him convert that into joy and excitement. Yeah, I've also found that as well. Um, I would really, I would talk to my friends um, and then just really learn from them, see what what their relationship with God is like. And it just really excites me because I want a relationship like that. Yeah, yeah. And there's no no one better than each other. 
we're all in this together to inspire each other and run the race together yeah and it's definitely a marathon not a sprint so we've got a few questions about the times when it isn't easy to stay that strong so how can you continue the life in a place that doesn't support you fully um, challenging. so my like advice on this um and sort of experience as well is just to to live unashamedly um yeah. mm. so like in the bible in second timothy 1 verse 7 it says for the spirit god gave us does not make us timid but gives us power love and self-discipline um so really that sort of spoke to me because i was kind of like oh okay um especially whenever i was in places where sort of being a christian wasn't fully supported or wasn't even supported at all um actually just knowing that that's that's who i am and to live completely for god Mm -hmm. um knowing that with god you can face any situation and just going into those places knowing that you've got god and god has you um and really he's just not gonna let you down that's close yeah so um what i do is i would seek my strength from god and so i pray into that and for god's strength to just really come in so that um god supports you in everything that um you do and also um i would well i would talk to my youth worker um and just really ask for um advice on that um so i could be supported by the church as well yeah class class and this is similar to something that i was thinking about a lot lately actually Um, and i asked uh, an amazing woman of god from my church and she gave me some really really good advice so i'm just going to share some of uh along the lines of what she said so it can definitely be a lonely place Uh, we're human and we can't always survive being the only one who's on fire for jesus um iron sharpens iron that's from proverbs 27 17 so find the people who encourage you and lean into those friendships video call them regularly um when we're allowed to meet up again meet up with them regularly keep each other going um not every place is gonna support you fully in your faith Um, some places aren't gonna support you at all in your faith mm. um but actually maybe if you can't even think of anyone then pray for them and the lady i was talking to struggled struggled with this prayed about it and god provided because god knew that she needed that she needed yeah. people to keep her fire going that's class guys um so our final question um is any advice on how to still be a christian in a friendship group that's not firstly it's amazing that not all your friends are christians i think that's really class Mm -hmm. um in itself Um, and it's really healthy and all your friends don't have to be believers um i think it's kind of similar to what i shared just there a minute ago have people who are burning with you you don't need everyone around you to be on the same faith level as you or even on a faith level at all yeah and but those who are along the same place in the journey are going to be vital so make sure you definitely invest in those friendships too yeah definitely um so sort of from my experience in school like some of my friends would have been christian but also some of them wouldn't have been um and so actually like knowing that some of them weren't christians they were never totally against it um and so actually um just even inviting them to come along to sort of your su in school or yeah um, maybe a youth club or a church service or something like that and actually starting up those conversations um, it's a way for you to sort of be spreading God's word as well. Um, and that's kind of where your front line's going to be. Um, but starting those conversations, maybe finding out why they aren't a Christian um, and sort of exploring that, but also letting them find out why you are a Christian and explaining that to them. So definitely um, have an answer prepared for that so that if someone asks you, well, why are you a Christian, that you can actually tell them the reason why you believe in god and why you follow him yeah that's a a challenge but definitely a privilege to get to talk to them about that yeah um so i would well in my uh, friendship group um when not many are christians i would just through my actions just um show god's love and then that might start like strike up conversations about um being a christian and then that would really just spark up conversations there yeah class and i think Maybe one of the struggles in a friendship group where you're the only Christian is um, maybe struggling with like the banter or the way they're acting um, because sometimes you know it's not what um, God wants. Yeah. Um, but actually in those times, remember that you don't have to go along with everything that your friends do. Um, yeah. I know at the time it seems like the biggest thing ever, but actually 
Um, there's been times I haven't played certain games or done certain things because um, the Holy Spirit within me was like, no, Amy, you know that that's not honouring God. Um, and my friends actually respected that. In my closest groups, we've even changed what our plans were going to be just out of respect. Um, true friends are going to respect you. And if you don't mm, want to do yeah. something, you don't have to do it. And if they make fun of you, that is destructive and that's not okay. So yeah. maybe rethink that kind of situation, but your true friends will 100% respect you. Yeah, definitely 100%. Um, so we really hope that that's answered some of your questions about living life as a Christian. So we're just going to take a moment to pray. Dear God, please help us to continue and grow and further develop in our relationship with you. Please help us to be able to live life to the full and how you want it to be, God. Please help us to keep our eyes on you in everything that we do and in any situation that we come to. Amen. Amen. So... As we've done in the previous episodes of the podcast, um, each week we're going to set you a challenge. And so we want you to film it and take a photo of it and then upload it to your Instagram story and tag us at Team Out Mission. Yeah, so our challenge for this week is to make the best origami that you can. Ooh. This is kind of inspired by Sarah who made a glorious turtle. Yes, I did. <laughs> there are countless tutorials on YouTube, so find the one that you like and get folding. Once you've taken a photo of it, upload it to your Instagram story and tag us. We cannot wait to see how you complete it. But that's us for now. We hope that you had a good time just like what we did. And don't forget to keep an eye on our social media and tune into our live stream this Sunday night at 7pm over on the IMYC Facebook and Instagram. Bye! Bye! Bye.